Today we're going to be looking at uh, designing an app to summarize our expenses. And we want to do the same thing with this app as we've done with the uh, purchase summary and margin uh, report. And at the end of it, what we want to do is we want to be able to allow management to go into a report, specify a beginning and an end date, be it a month and a year, and then have the report generate a summary by expense item, the total amount of expenses by item for that particular period. Once they have this information uh, with respect to their uh, expenses for a given month, along with their revenues, then of course we'll be able to determine what their profitability was for that specific month or time period. Having those two options in there, uh, allowing a start and end date the user could filter on a month, a week, a quarter, a year, so it'll be a very powerful and useful tool. Um, so let's jump right into that. Okay, so we had left off by creating a accounts payable voucher form, and this form allows the business as bills come in to uh, list the date on the bill, who the vendor was, Okay, we set these up by creating a relationship between uh, our accounts payable form, or table rather. All this information is coming from the voucher table, which was then, um, we create a relationship between that and the vendor table to pull the, uh, the vendor's names over, uh, bill number, the employees. Again, on this particular uh, form, the voucher table, we create an additional relationship between that and the employee table. Um, and of course, we created a list on how the company was going to pay. And we create an additional list for the specific items that they may be purchasing and the quantities, the unit price, and of course the total. And then of course, uh, in a similar fashion as we created in our invoice module, we've got a subtotal of all the items, the applicable tax, and then the total amount due. We had then gone through and we had created about a dozen different vouchers. So this will give us uh, you know, a good start as to the expenses that the company has incurred for this time frame. And we've put all these expenses into January 2020, so when we run our summary report, we'll have something to look at. Now, the app that we're about to build um, will be uh, updated in real time. And what I mean by that is as we, once it's built, um, as we go in and we add more vouchers, into our system, it will automatically update. There won't be anything additional that we'll need to do. All right, so let's get in and, and build this. Now, we'll, as always, we want to start with a clean slate, and we're going to build this app using the query. So we'll select the Create button, and we'll go to Query Design. Now we've got our uh, workbench, as I like to refer to it. So as with anything we're building on our system, we have to first decide, well, well what First of all, what is the end goal? What do we want to see? Well, we want to be able to see the expenses, the total amount of expenses by a specific time period. So we're going to need a list of the items, the date, the unit price, and the number of units purchased, which are all contained just on two tables that we created. So our accounts payable voucher detail table, okay, we'll have a list of the type of items, the units purchased, and the unit price. But we also want to have the date field on there. So that's going to be located on the actual voucher table itself. Let me just expand these a little bit. Okay, so on our voucher table, here's our date of our bill. We get the vendor and all these other items here that we've created. So <clears throat> how we build this is important in terms of sequence from left to right because of the way that we're going to sort this. So the first thing that we're going to want in our first column is the actual items. Like what was it? Was it office expenses, repairs and maintenance, advertising? So we double click on expenses and that will automatically populate down here. Next, we want to be able to sort by the date. So we'll bring down our date in the next column just by double clicking on date of bill. And then we're going to need the units purchased, like how many, how many, and then also the price. Okay, so that's really the only four fields that are going to be required uh, to build this app. Now, before we go in and create a, uh, an expression, we're going to need to save this. So right-click and save, and we'll call this 
expense summary. And select OK. And now what we need to do here is we want to be, because we're going to be um, running this to total or sum all the expenses uh, by category, we need to put in an additional field. So we're going to click in the first open column to the right, go to our expression builder. And what we want here is we want the sum of the units purchased times the unit price. Okay, Very, just real super simple. So what it's going to do is by each description of the item, it will summarize uh, the total amount of units purchased times the units price based on a spe specified time period that we're, gonna, that we're going to create. So I'll select OK. And now <clears throat> we very carefully, what we want to do here is we want to change the title of that field from expression one. We'll call this total expense. Okay, and we're going to save it. Now, what we want to do next is we want to, because we're going to be sorting this, we need to add a row in our, uh, in our section down here, and it's going to be a totals row. And that allows us to uh, set it, to, uh, or rather organize each column by either group by, sum, expression, or whatever it is that we need to do. So over in the show hide section here at the top of your screen, we're going to select the summation symbols for totals. And when we do that, you'll see, you'll see it populate down in this area here. Okay, and now you can see we have a totals row. And if we go across here, we've got group by. And <clears throat> how the program works is it does a group by uh, left to right. So first we'll start by the items and then we'll go by the date. Now, what happens is every time we add uh, a field into a column here, it will by default set it to group by. So we do have to make a couple of changes. So where we've got units purchased, we're going to want to change this to sum. And also the unit price, we're going to want to change this to sum. And now what we need to do here for the, uh, the expenses, because we actually put in a formula here in our expression builder, we need to change this to expression. Okay, let's save that. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the um, format that's going to get returned in this column is in currency. So again, in the show and hide section, I'm going to activate my property sheet. And then under format, we're going to select currency. And we're going to save. Okay, I'm going to go back here to design view. Okay, so once we've selected currency and we've selected save, we can now go over here and we can actually run the query or run the app. Okay. All right, so taking a look now, through our columns, we have a list of our items, expenses, the date on the bill, the sum of the units purchased, a lot will fit that, the sum of the purchase price, and the total expenses. But if you look down our list, we can see we've got freight and deliveries listed a couple of times, we've got office supplies, we've got three records of that, professional fees are listed a couple of times. So we really don't want this. What we want, rather, is we want to have the total or a summary of each expense item. We want a total of that. We don't want it all broken down like this. What would end up happening, especially you know, um, with a lot of volume of transactions, this list could end up getting very, very large. And you just, you know, you don't want to find office supplies listed on here, you know, 40 times within a month. We just want to have one line with the total on it. So we can do that just by making some modifications to our date field. So we'll go back to design view. And down here where it says date of bill, here's where we're going to make some modifications. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to expand this a little bit, or quite a bit, so that you're able to see on what we wanna do. So 
this is going to require two steps. First, we, we're going to want to actually format it. So we'll use our arrow key and we'll type in format followed by an open parenthesis followed by an open square bracket. Then we'll move over to where it says bill and we're going to put in a closing square bracket followed by a single comma followed by one quote mark and then we want to put the month in but we're going to use 4m so we get the entire month in there so m m m m and then that's going to be followed by two sets of quote marks one two followed by a comma followed by two more quote marks one two and now we want to put in the year so we're going to have the year again we want the full year so it'll be uh four y's one two three four and we'll follow that with one set of quote marks and then lastly closing parenthesis so again we've got format open square bracket just before date of bill and right after date of bill we have a closing square bracket followed by a comma followed by one quote mark followed by four m's followed by two sets of quote marks comma two more quote marks four y's for the year followed by a single set of quote marks followed by a closing parenthesis so that's going to format our date next what we want to do down here in the criteria row oops we've messed something up here let's see what we did here so we want uh, after the comma one set of quotes four m's two quotes comma two quotes four y's one quote and closing parenthesis okay there we go now for the criteria row here what we want to do here is where we're going to program this so that we have pop-up menus um, to ask the user to put in specified dates so we're going to begin this with greater than equal to and then an open square bracket now <clears throat> the items that are going to be contained in these open square brackets are what are going to appear in the text in the pop-ups so we want to just key in enter the start date okay followed by a closing square bracket and then hit your space bar one time and type in the word and in capital letters Hit your space bar one more time, followed by an opening square bracket again, and then we'll put in end date, followed by a square bracket. Okay, so that little code again was, oops, one moment here, we need to enter uh, just before the end date. So let's get our cursor flashing right beside uh, and, and we'll hit our space bar once. And we want to put in less than or equal to so this works correctly so let's review this again we've got greater than equals to open square bracket enter the start date close square bracket space bar and <clears throat> the word and all in capital letters space bar less than equal to open square bracket end date close square bracket so basically what this means is when we put in a start date, we're telling the system anything that is um, greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date is what is going to be the criteria to run a report. So let's save it, hit run. And now you can see we've got this uh, pop-up menu that's instructing us to enter the start date. So because we've put in, we're looking specifically for January, 2020, but again, depending on the transactions that you've created uh, and the time frame on those you can put any time frame you like i'm going to put january comma 2020 and now it's asking us for the end date so january comma 2020 okay and now we can see the difference here 
So now we can see each expense item is only listed one time. You can see the quantities here. So office supplies, there were 23 items purchased for a total expense of 2019.73. Uh, you know, there were two freights and deliveries, two professional fees, two items for repairs and maintenance, two bills for, uh, uh, for the telephone. So this will summarize everything. Now we can clean this up even a little further. And what we want to do is we want to change the heading on this from expression one, we'll give it a meaningful name. And then we don't really need to see these two columns here. So I'll show you how to remove those from the display. So let's go back into design view again. And we're going to go down here to where we just made the modifications for the date. We're going to just click inside where it says expression one here and carefully just toggle over to the right of the number one. We're going to back up and we'll just put in month space year and save it. Now let's run it again to make sure that that takes. It wants a start date. Now when you're putting in these start dates and end dates, you don't need any spaces, just the, uh, the month, comma, and the year. End date. Okay. And we have got our column fixed there. All right, the last modification, as I mentioned, we're going to just, we want to remove these, not remove them, but we, want, we don't want these to show or be displayed on a report. So we're going to design view. And <clears throat> all we need to do to accomplish this, if we go to the, uh, the row here where it says show, you'll notice that there's a little check marks. By default, it will always display check marks. So we can deselect these items. Now, they are still, you know, the form, or pardon me, the values are still going to be there, or the variables will still be there, so that this expression or calculation works. It's just not going to appear on the report. So we'll save it and run it. And again, it's asking for our dates. Okay, that's better. Now we've got a very clean looking report. We've just got the time period start and end, and we've got our expense items listed and the totals. Now the only other thing that I'm gonna to wanna, to, slight modification that I wanna make here, from left to right, I would prefer to have you know my date show first and then my item. So that's easy, easy to do here. We'll just get our uh, cursor over uh, where it says month year. We'll click on that column and then Press and hold down our left mouse button so we get that solid green line that's appearing and then just drag it over to the left and release. And now we've got the month and year, the items, and then the total expenses here. And we're going to save it. Okay, so that's going to conclude this video on how to prepare a summary query. Now this can be used on expenses, it can be used on revenues, can be used on any sort of category that you have within your system. And next, we're going to um, add a button and put this on our, our report.